Hello everyone to those who are new in this channel. By the way, I am Engineer Jay. I am a civil engineer and currently teaching as an engineering professor. Now we have here a new topic in theory of a structure. We have here analysis of a statically determinate structure with internal supports. So basically, this is the continuation of our topic in strength of materials which is the analysis of determinate beam where we learned there how to draw the shear and moment diagram by two methods we have the area method and shear and moment equations so if you have not watched that uh, discussion yet so i posted the link of that video in the description below so if you may ask what makes this lesson unique from the previous discussion that i made so in this lesson, we will be including here internal supports such as internal hinges and internal ruler and estimating deflection diagram by just looking at the moment diagram. So unlike with the lesson we had in strength of materials in which we only dealt with external supports, external loads, and so on. Okay? So the objective of this lesson is that we will be computing here external reactions. We will draw the shear and bending moment diagram. So the same as with our previous video. And we will also include how to draw or how to exaggerate the deflection of the beam by um, creating a deflection diagram. Okay, so that would be the objectives of this lesson. So let's try to solve an example here. So we have this beam with three supports. So we have um, support A, which is hinge support or pin support. And we have B and E here, which has a ruler support. So upon looking at the beam, we would conclude that this one is an indeterminate structure. Since again, we have three supports okay and then we only have um we have four external reactions but we only have three available equilibrium equation but take note we have internal hinge there this internal hinge makes this entire beam um, determinate structure so this is no longer an indeterminate beam since we have internal supports in this beam so how are you going to check if this one is determinate or indeterminate so again we just need to count the number of reactions so by just um, following the formula r plus the internal forces then we compare it to three times the number of rigid okay so we count the number of reaction here so external reaction, so since we have um, hinge at support A, so we have two reactions, okay? And for a ruler support, we have one, and at E, we also have one. So for external reactions, we have four plus the internal force. So we have internal hinge here, and if we cut at this point, we would have two internal force, and that is... Um, vertical force and horizontal force so we have two internal forces so we have six then for the right side we have three times the number of rigid rigid member since again we have a member a to c and c to e so we have a two rigid member here so we have two then three times two that would give us six now take note this right side and left side equations are equal so that means this one is a determinate structure or that is statically determinate externally but for um, its internal behavior this one uh, is an internally unstable since we have internal hinged in our beam Okay, so the first thing we do here is um, draw the shear and moment diagram. So we can use two methods here by using um, area method or the shear and moment equations. And then we draw the 
qualitative deflected shape or the deflection diagram of the beam. Okay, so let's begin the analysis of this beam. Now, uh, since this beam is a determinate structure, so we will be using the equilibrium equations in computing its external reactions or external forces. Okay, so those equilibrium equations such as summation of forces vertically, summation of forces horizontally, and summation of moments are enough in computing the external reactions. However, since we have uh, three supports here with four external reactions, so we will be um, cutting this beam into two. Okay, so we will be cutting this beam at point C, which is the location of our internal hinge. So we will be cutting at this point here. So we have a two segment here. So we have a segment ABC. So we have a segment ABC and CDE. Okay? Since again, we have a two rigid members here. Okay? Now at point C, since point C here is internal hinge, so therefore, we only have two internal reactions. So we have um, forces vertical and forces horizontal. Okay, so we do not have moment at that point there. So we have a, let's say that is we have CY that goes up and we have CX that goes to the left okay and on the right beam or the right segment so we have the same in magnitude but opposite in direction okay so since on the left side of point c we have upward vertical force so therefore on the right side we have a downward internal force let's say cy and a rightward horizontal force that is cx so again they have opposite in direction but they always have the same magnitude okay now at point a since this one is a hinge so we have a two reactions we have vertical let's say that's a y and a x now at b since this one is a roller support so this means this have only vertical reaction that is b y and for the um, support at e since again this one is a ruler support that means this only have one external reaction and that goes upward or so let's assume that this one is upward force that is e y okay so we can now compute or we can now um, determine the reactions okay by first computing reaction e Okay, since we cut this into two segments, so we will be analyzing the two segments individually. Okay, so we sum up moment at C, and this one is equal to zero. So we assume that all the forces rotating counterclockwise are positive. So if we sum up moment at C, then we only have two forces that would be included here or two forces that would have moment and that is the external load 55 so we have 55 times the moment arm from c we have three now take note the rotation of 55 with respect to point c is clockwise okay so that means this one is negative then plus ey the rotation of ey about point c is counterclockwise that means that it's positive and the moment arm or the distance of ey or the perpendicular distance of ey from point c is six meters correct so that means we have moment arm six and this always equates to zero so we have here ey equals to 27.5 and the unit the unit here is in kilonewton so we have the value of our ey 27.5 kilonewton okay so we are done with reactions at support e so we would proceed now to the computation of reactions of support a and support b 
Okay, so we have three remaining supports here. So how are we going to analyze um, or how are we going to compute A and B? So we can um, analyze this beam individually by summing up moment at C. However, take note, if we sum up moment at C, we would have two unknowns, that is AY and BY. Okay? But if we sum up moment at A, we would also have two unknowns, that is BY and CY. So, our strategy here is to analyze um, the beam as a whole. Okay? So, we will go back to this beam here. So, we will not... Um, analyze these beams individually na. Okay? So, we will analyze this beam as a whole na. Okay? Now, take note, we have the value of our EY here, which is 27.5. Okay? And that goes up since we have positive value. So, we have, again, we have AY here and AX. We also have BY here. So, we can compute BY here first by summing up moment at A. Okay? So, we sum up moment at A is equal to 0. So, all the force that rotates counterclockwise are positive. So, we have 27.5. So, this one is positive since this is counterclockwise times the moment arm of 27.5 from A. We have 9 plus... Um, this one is 9 as well. So, we have 18 meters. Okay, the perpendicular distance of 27.5 from um, point A. Then, we have BY. So, again, this one is B. This one is positive, correct? Since this rotates counterclockwise. So, BY times the moment arm from A is 9 meters. So, we have 9 now, take note, we have external load. So, we have uniformly distributed load here. The resultant of this one is 15 times. Now, our uniform load here runs from 0 to 12, correct? So, this one is 12. Since the length of our uniformly distributed load here is 12, we have 9 plus 3 meters, okay? Then... The moment arm is 6 meter. That is the location of our resultant. The distance from point A to the center of our uniformly distributed load. Okay, since again we have 12 meter as the length of our uniformly distributed load. So we have here 15, that is a uniformly distributed load, times 12. This is the area of our load, times the moment arm 6. Now, the rotation is clockwise from point A. That means we have negative here. We have external point load, which is 55 kilonewton. Okay. Now, 55 kilonewton um, location is at point D, which is 15 meters from point A. Since this one is 6 meters, correct? So, from, from point A, we have 15 meters distance. So, we have... 55 times 15. The rotation is counterclockwise. That means this one is negative. Then this always equates to 0. Okay? So we can now compute BY here. And BY here equals to 156.667 kilonewton. So we have now the reaction at B. So, we only have remaining reaction here, which is the reactions at point A. So, if we sum up forces horizontally, so we have summation of force horizontal is equal to zero. Again, this applies to the entire beam. So, we only have one. Uh, we do not have external load that acts horizontally, correct? So, that means we can say then that um, reaction at A or horizontal reaction at A is equal to zero. How about the vertical reaction at A? So we can sum up forces vertically. So we have summation. Summation of forces vertical is equal to zero. Upward forces are positive. Then we have AY plus BY plus EY minus 
um, the resultant of the uniformly distributed load 15 times 12 minus 55 is equal to 0 so we have ay plus by we have already computed the value of by here which is 156.667 plus ey ey is 27.5 minus 15 times 12 minus 55 is equal to 0 so this would give us the value of our ay which is equal to 50.833 kilo newton and this is acting upward okay by is acting upward as well and the same as with ey so this is our reaction at ay so this is how you compute um, reactions for beam with internal hinges again this is not a simply supported beam again in simply supported beam we have only two supports that is hinge and cooler but take note here we have uh, three supports and with one um, internal supports okay so you just cut the beam into um, two or more uh, segment so based on the number of rigid members okay so then our goal here is to draw the shear and moment diagram so in creating a shear and moment diagram so we have uh, two approaches so first we have um, area method and the shear and moment equation method but the easiest and the simplest one is by using the area method so if you have not watched my video regarding these two methods in creating a shear and moment diagram please watch my um, previous discussions on these lessons I have posted the link in the description so let's now draw the shear and um, now let's try to draw the shear diagram first now we have to um, write first the reaction so for um, at support A EY is equal to 50.833 kN for B, BY here is equal to 156.667 and at support E, the reaction is 27.5 kN. So let's begin at the um, leftmost support, which is point A. So at leftmost support, our initial shear there is, is 50.833. Okay, so we go up at point a since a y here is acting upward so our point here is on the top of our um, datum which is this one this is our datum zero so we have 50.833 there then now take note this is in zero degree our load is in zero degree so therefore our shear diagram should be on the first degree order or on the linear equation or linear graph so we have um, our shear one okay is equal to 50.833 okay minus the area of our load which is 15 times 9 so this gives us negative 84.167 kilonewton since this one is negative so we uh, plot our points below the datum or the reference line so we have at this point here let's say this one is 84 negative 84.167 so we connect the two points so we have this one okay now at support B or at point B we have upward reaction which is 156.667 so we have second shear is negative 84.167 plus 156.667 so this equals to 72.5 okay so we go up so our point is 72.5 so let's say at that point so we have um, 72.5 okay then at that point at our uh, point c 
So let's say that's our third shear force, so is equal to 72.5 since our uniformly distributed load here is going downward. So this one is negative 15 times 3, so that is the, um, the area of our load above um, BC. So this equals to 27.5. So we have to move downward. So at this point, that's positive. So we have 27.5. Then we connect the points. And this 27.5 here, this is the value of the internal force CY. Okay? Then at that point, now take note, we do not have a load from C to D. So we have a zero degree at that point so we have a horizontal line at this point okay then since we have a so our v4 here is since we have a point load so we have 27.5 minus 55 since this one is going downward and this equals to negative 27.5 so we have um, at this point okay so we go downward so we have here negative 27.5 now we do not have load between D and E so that means we have a zero degree line so we have this line now take note at point E we have 27.5 reaction which is going upward so at V5 or our our final shear so we have a negative 27.5 plus 27.5 this gives us zero so that means since we end at zero shear so that means we have correct shear diagram okay so we have correct shear diagram again since we have um, our final shear equals to zero so this one now is our shear diagram for this beam and now let's draw the moment diagram so we will still be using the area method okay the simplest and easiest way in drawing the shear and moment diagram so now let's proceed or let's start from the leftmost of our beam which is at point A now since again this is a hinge so therefore we do not have moment at that point so we start at moment zero or that is a zero kilonewton meter okay so that means at that point we have zero moment so and then we proceed at this point let's say that is our point a prime okay now at this point we have a zero shear okay that means from since we have a zero shear there that means that is the location of the maximum or the highest point of our curve Again, the location of the highest point of our curve is where our shear becomes zero, okay? So at that point, we have the maximum point of our parabola or our second degree curve, okay? So how are we going to compute? So we have um, the area of the shear diagram above this point, okay? That means we have, however, we do not have the um, the distance since this one is a triangle and we will be needing the length of its base okay so how are we going to compute that length there so we can use the ratio and proportion so by ratio and proportion so we have um, 50.833 is to let's say that's x okay over x equals to 84.167 over since we have 9 meter as a total length from A to B that means this length here is 9 minus X correct okay and that's 9 minus X so we have over 9 minus X so by um, evaluating it further we have X is equal to so you can use your algebra or if you have your calculator then you can directly compute it by shift solve so we have the value of x which is 3.389 meters so we have a 3.389 as the distance from point a to a prime therefore from a prime to b we have 9 minus x that would give us 5.389 
5.611 okay 5.611 meters that is the length from a prime to b so we can now compute the area of the shear diagram so at uh, let's say that's our m1 this equals to we start at zero then that's positive since that is a positive shear area that is the area of a triangle one half 50.833 times the length of our triangle which is 3.389 so this gives us our moment one 86.137 okay that's positive moment okay that is let's say at this point we have 86.137 okay and then that that is the highest point of our curve since again that is the location of our zero shear so we have a second degree curve now this one is concave downward since we have a, a decreasing magnitude of our shear diagram okay since we have decreasing shear force so that means we have a frowning curvature okay so if you uh, are not uh, familiar with the orientation so i have posted the discussion on how to draw the shear and moment diagram on the description below okay so let's proceed to the second moment so we have now let's start with positive 86.137 then we have negative shear area which is negative one half times the area of this triangle this one which is 84.167 times the length of the triangle which is 5.611 this would give us negative 149.994 and this one is kilonewton meter okay so we have negative 149.994 which is below the reference line so we have at this point here let's say that is negative 149.994 and since this is also a um, going downward force so that means we have a um, frowning curvature okay and that is in second order since this one is first order so the moment diagram should be on the second order so that means we have parabolic curvature so this would be our curve which is a parabolic curve then at, at then we proceed to moment three so at this point here now take note we have the area of our trapezoid okay so we have moment 3 is we start at negative 149.994 then positive area since that area there this area is above the reference point or that is positive area so we have the area of the trapezoid one half times um, 72.5 plus 27.5 times the length which is 3 meters okay this one so times 3 this would give us zero okay or 0 0.006 so this is approximately equal to zero why zero now take note at point c this one is internal hinge correct so at point c we should not have internal moment since that is a hinge so we have only two internal forces that is the vertical and horizontal internal force so no internal moment so that would justify why we have zero moment at C okay now we have the curvature which is um, frowning curvature or concave downward since we have a downward shear force here so that means we have this curve okay so we stop at zero now at C to D so we have moment four so we begin with a zero moment plus the area of our shear diagram this one so we have 27.5 times 3 this would give us 82.5 kilonewton meters so this is the moment at point d now take note this one is zero degree order 
that means we have a linear or a line graph here okay so we have first degree moment diagram so we have 82.5 so at this point let's say at that point 82.5 so we have a first degree um, moment diagram and then um, at at our final moment, so we have M4, so we begin with 82.5 moment, then minus the negative area, since this is a negative shear area, so we have um, 27.5 times 3, this would give us 0. So that means we have correct moment diagram since we end with 0 moment diagram. So we have on this moment diagram for our beam okay so you can try to draw the shear and moment diagram by using the shear and moment equations so we are done with shear and moment diagram now let's try to draw the deflection diagram okay so let's ex exaggerate the deflection since in reality the deflection should be small okay that is in millimeter or so on but for this one, in order to internalize the behavior of our beam, so we would um, try to draw the deflection exaggeratedly, okay? So in drawing the deflection diagram, we will just be needing the moment diagram lang, okay? So we will just try to look at the moment diagram. So if we have a positive moment diagram, that means we have a smiling bending diagram, correct? Since we have a um, smiling face. Now, for a negative moment, that means we have a frowning bending, okay? That is a frowning curvature for deflection diagram. Now, at the point where we have a zero moment, okay, that is the point of inflection, okay? Inflection point. Inflection point is where, our, um, where the curvature of our um, bending diagram changes like it changed from um, a concave downward to concave upward okay from frowning to smiling curvature so at that point this is what we call the inflection point okay or where our beam changes in curvature okay so let's start with at point a or at a now take note this is a hinge so that means we do not have a movement downward unless we have a settlement or soil settlement at that point but take note this problem does not um, state that there is a soil settlement at point a so that means we do not have vertical displacement at this point okay now take note at this point we have a positive moment so that means we have a smiling curvature as our deflection diagram so we have this deflection diagram so this is our deflection diagram for this moment but we should end at the inflection point so again this is the inflection point so at that point there is a change in curvature so from smiling it becomes frowning okay so it becomes frowning okay now take note since we have support at point B that means our beam is restricted to move vertically at this point okay How, uh, however this is invalid if we have a soil settlement at point B okay so we have um, to stay at this point so now for um, this moment diagram since again this is still negative moment that means we have a frowning curvature for our deflection diagram so we go here then at this point since this is internal hinge at this point we do not have moment and our moment here is zero that means this is the inflection point okay so this is the inflection point or the change in curvature so we have we have to change our um, curvature from concave downward to concave upward since this one is a positive shear or positive moment rather so that means we have a smiling curvature for our deflection and then at this point we still have a positive moment so that means um, we have we still have a smiling curvature so at this point here 
Now take note this deflection diagram here, this is just an approximation since we do not know yet the value of our um, deflection. Okay, so unless if you know the value of our deflection, then we could possibly know the direction of our bending. Okay, it could be upward or it could be downward vertical deflection. And of course, we would also know its curvature by computing its slope. Just like this one, we would have a slope here, like this one here. Okay, and we would also have the slope at point T. So by computing the value of the slope, the value of deflection, we would have the exact, um, the exact deflection diagram. But take note, since in this uh, lesson, we will just basing the deflection diagram on the moment diagram. Therefore, this is just only an approximation. Again, since we do not know yet the value of our slope, and the value of our um, deflection. So again, we have computed all, or we have drawn the shear diagram, the moment diagram, and the deflection diagram, or the approximate deflection diagram of our beam. Okay, now in the second part of this video, we will try to solve um, structure with uh, vertical members. Again, guys, thank you for listening and see you in the second part of this discussion. God bless.